We haven't seen one of these since the 60s. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's time for that Mod Collection Demo Shop recap. This week was a little bit crazy. They were two minutes late, we only got eight guitars, but they brought out some real humdingers this time. Let's get into it. The first one is a double neck. They called it the EDS 1275. However, that's not a 1275. This is a EBS 1250. Gibson hasn't made one of these in forever. Elvis has a famous photo shoot of him playing one of these things, but it's a four string bass mixed with a six string electric guitar. And a couple of years ago, when we first saw the Gene Simmons Thunderbirds, there was a rumor that we talked about in this episode that Gibson was going to be making him a signature one of these. So either that's fallen through and they decided to remake this, or it's just a slightly damaged one of those and maybe we'll see him soon. I'm not sure, but here is a modern day EBS that is insane. But it's really frustrating because at launch, when you clicked on this to get to the listing, it just took you to the bases like this. It's like, hey, where's the thing I want to go to? I don't know why it redirected you here. But they did eventually end up fixing it and they want 12,000 bucks. So we've got a custom white finish. We've got two Thunderbird pickups on here. That's pretty crazy. Look at that ultra heavy duty bridge. Same thing going on with our tailpiece, but pretty basic stuff over here as far as the guitar side goes. But you've got this custom gold pick guard, gold speed knobs. Interestingly enough, we have binding on the six string side, but not on the bass. As far as the headstocks, I was kind of confused. Are those Gibson decals or are they mother of pearl? I believe they're pearl, but we can see this is a satin finish, which means the rest of this is satin. That seems like a weird choice for such a rare modern day recreation. They should have went full on gloss, but the next photo really piqued my interest. DS000. Two. It's been a while since we've seen a DS serial number. I always assume it stood for Demo Shop. And if it was a really crazy guitar that lost its serial number or they wanted to say that, hey, it's super special because they no longer do the Gibson original modified decal. But this one's number two. Had it been number one, I probably would have forked out the cash because that's what the one you want in your collection, the first Demo Shop serial. But it is kind of interesting that they have it on both headstocks. But you've got hip shot tuners over here and Age Clusens over there. And the back plate matches the pick guard. You've got your big old Gibson custom case. So yeah, definitely wasn't expecting that. And they're actually saying it's from 2020 over here. Apparently it weighs almost 13 pounds, but as of the time of recording, it's still available. 12,000 is a lot of money. But look at this doofy thing. Explorer elbow cut custom in royal orange sparkle. 5,500 bucks, let's see what's going on here. Okay, it's a weird looking Explorer. The whole reason this exists is Eric Clapton is well known for using an Explorer that looked like this. He thought it was factory stock, it ended up being a modification, and then he didn't like the guitar as much, as far as the stories I've heard over the internet. So I was just thinking it was one of those, but refinished. However, the fact that we have a regular custom shop serial number, a regular Gibson custom decal, makes me think this was more so a custom order that maybe went wrong and they had to redo it. And as far as the pickups go, 57 class with a plus in the bridge. But we've got the uncovered pickups with ambered over knobs with ultra dark fretboard that almost looks like they opted for real mother of pearl inlays on that one. And then you've got all this going on. I really need to document one of these Clapton cuts. I just can't imagine it would be that comfortable though. I like that part of the Explorer but it weighs in at about eight pounds and we've got the following specs. Looks pretty basic for the most part. Next, we've got some other cool custom colors. This is a regular Les Paul custom in Taijitu gloss, which is a term in modern Chinese that a lot of people in the United States call yin yang. Well, I see somebody is cultured over at Gibson. You got a black top and it's like all blacked out, including your pickups and also the fretboard if you really want to get into it. But that is like an ultra dark black finish. That's a deeper shade of ebony than usual. But then we can see it definitely has at least white sides, but in fact, a completely white back. But since it has white and black binding, it also continues on that theme and you get a little bit of black back here. And you could also say your reflector knobs over here, they've got some white elements to it, white switch tip, white mother of pearl inlay. Headstock is nothing different, but continues on the theme. What this really needed is one of those double headstock veneers. Like we're not just talking a stinger here with additional inlays like you would find on a Legrand. I'm talking write yourself up a ticket with a citation. Big gaudy headstock with another big gaudy headstock on the back. <laughs> I love those things. It's like, why? Just because they can. 
Maybe put a fancy Epiphone one on the back. But all things considered, that thing was pretty cool. Even with a ding on the face and a $500 premium. Whoa, surprisingly still in stock at time of recording. I mean, come on guys, you're sleeping on that. Super 74 pickups, you can't even buy those things separately. So I think that's worth the $500 premium just right there. It's a decent weight. Specs all seem to be pretty normal for a regular Les Paul Custom. That's a non-reissue year. But if SGs are a little bit more your style, here is a 63 reissue done up in a new smoked ruby finish. It's got kind of a red black burst going on with the striking white pick guards. Those just come at ya. And we're rocking custom buckers. Pair that with the gold hardware, that works incredibly well. Like if I were specking this out myself, I don't think I would have ever thought of the white. I probably would have stuck with a more traditional black, which would probably give it more of an evil hue. But yet it still looks evil with the white. Looks like they left our headstock alone, but gave it a Les Paul Custom historic style truss rod cover. And ooh, we're in for a treat if the back of the headstock is bursted. Or maybe not. <laughs> you know, I thought I was building myself up on that and they did not disappoint in thinking that I was going to be disappointed. <laughs> so they're just calling it a custom finish, but that looks satin to me. And now this thing. I wish it was cheaper because I need to document this model. We just recently talked about the Les Paul Custom Light, the original version from the 80s, and then we talked about the 2010s era. And we also briefly mentioned the 2015 Les Plus. Another one within this family was a dealer exclusive classic light. It was just a Les Paul Classic. They did the same treatments to it. So being a dealer exclusive, you don't see them in the mod collection demo shop too often. And I believe they stopped making these things around 2019, 2020-ish. I think they were only offered in like a sunburst and an ebony finish, but I could be misremembering that. But now we've got like this cool teal color. They put witch hat knobs on it, all gold hardware. They definitely spiced it up a little bit. Headstock even got heavily modified with black and gold theme of mix matching hardware and no longer says Les Paul model. But if you check out the back, it's been nicely bronzed and then you got the moto back plates. But you can see your comfort carve here. But strangely, as we cycle through all these photos, there's not a good side angle shot. So I'm curious if people even know what the classic light is to expect that really thin body. Next, we've got Raspberry Bliss ES339. Whoa, wow. Look at it from right here. I just thought it was like a dark maroon color. And then it's like, bam, berry sparkle in your face. Okay. That's actually pretty cool now that I've seen it a bit more close up. That would just dance in the light. But then the back is just this really bright, vibrant cherry red. And then you've got some interesting flame figuring back here. All one piece, a little bit of a run or something right there. And then you get your mahogany wood grain. Headstock looks about the same, but that was a bit more exciting than I was expecting. But our next SG is called Mars Eclipse. It's another one of those strip the aniline dyes off the SG and then spray it in a slightly new color and still have it underneath it. So a little bit of red and pink, although I think I liked last week's better. But you get a pole pieceless neck pickup. Whoa, interestingly enough, they're calling it a double slug Alnico 2 custom bucker. But the bridge is just a regular Alnico 3. Really worn down nickel, witch hat knobs. Headstock is looking like this. The back's pretty much more of the same. But oh my goodness, do you guys see the, the big happy like clown-like face? It's very cartoonish. So this is the outline of his head. He's like a bald guy. This is a big nose. And then you got your two eyes right here. And then this is like his smiley face. It's a happy guy with a tie. Kind of clown-esque, but I like it. But oh, that's funny. They've got a limited truss rod cover on here. If I remember correctly, that belongs to an acoustic model. So kind of interesting to see that there. That doesn't seem like that bad of a price. I wonder if it sold. Yes, it did. So people are willing to buy these weird colors as long as the price is right. But hey, before we get to the last one, do you remember that strange Les Paul custom neck on a Les Paul standards body from last week that we couldn't tell if there was binding or not? The person who purchased it sent me some additional photos and look at that beautiful side angle shot. Awesome wood grain there. And it does turn out it has black binding. It perfectly matches there. Kind of interesting to have a black bound body with a white bound neck, but it kind of works when you're mashing a couple of models together. And here's this nice outside shot showing off that beautiful back. And you might remember this thing had a volute. But unfortunately, it didn't help it. That guitar got broken in transit. So there you go. Just because you put a volute on a guitar doesn't mean it's always going to save it. Just like those five-piece maple necks, those aren't indestructible either. But it does give you a slightly better chance. So something crazy happened in transit on that one. Thankfully for Gibson, though, that looks like a really easy repair. It broke in the cleanest way possible. 
And my friends, we have one last one out of the mod collection. It's called a Les Paul Access Standard in Root Beer Flame. I don't know about you guys, but that is definitely not root beer. They had root beer finishes back in the mid-2000s. They had them on Les Paul standards. This just kind of looks like wine red to me, but maybe a little bit faded out. Maybe it's got more brown hues in person, but it's a Floyd Rose Les Paul standard. There's our root beer. It's on the back. That looks impressive. Why didn't they do that on the top, too? Come on, this isn't cherry cola we're talking about. It's root beer. Yeah, all I've got to say is bring that molasses -y brown color into production. Or not, because it's still sitting. So definitely a quality over quantity type of week. Let's check out the demo shop. They released about 25 new guitars. Here's the ones that stood out to me. And starting on Saturday, a 15% off sale began that lasts for a couple of days. There was this standard 50s for 2200. That top would really come to life in person. Kind of a similar thing on this 2400 unburst. Might not look like too much in photos, but you can tell it's got decent travel. But this thing knocked me out of my seat. 2400. Triple A top. It's so deep and rigid. You don't see that on the Gibson USAs. Like, it's not perfectly matched, but I would like to see that thing in person. Because not only do you got these zebra stripes going on, but you've got all this cool wood grain underneath it. That is exactly the kind of top I like. So don't sleep on that one. It will not last. Next up, we got a classic. It was unique. Unique good, unique bad. I'll let you decide. It's kind of ugly, but the I feel bad for you, ugly, mustached Les Paul that has a stain on your face. <laughs> In contrast, here's a different classic for 2100. Kind of reminds me of a spruce top that's really straight wood grain, but yet it doesn't have the crossed hatched flame like we see a lot. Then for 2400, a AAA top in a very slight reverse chevron flame. It's not as extreme as sometimes it can be. But in our unique model category, here's a 59 355. We used to see these things in the demo shop all the time. They've been pretty sparse lately. But this has got all the wood grain. It's got a little bit of flame. I think it's looking pretty good, all things considered. Some ketchup mustard vibes with our pick garden knobs. And the back, just more of the same, but with a mahogany neck. Then have you guys been noticing this? The Les Paul specials and TV Yellow have been getting a lot darker lately. When these things first came out, they were pretty vibrant. But now I feel like they're getting closer to what I kind of thought a TV Yellow finish would look like. They're really accentuating that wood grain. I wonder if it has to do with the color of the mahogany underneath it or if they reformulated anything. And now we've got to take a trip over to Europe in the beautiful Netherlands to see what they had for us this week. Unfortunately, not much. There's a tribute that had some wood grain. There was an SG standard for 1100 bucks. That caught me by surprise when it was surprise 2015 spec one. They're still trying to get rid of all these things. And this seemed like an all right deal. 1700 bucks in that market for one of your 61 maestros. Same story on this one at 2150. Nice iced tea burst for not being a triple A top. That's not too bad. A month ago, we had never heard of the Americana Rangers, but now it just seems every week we get a new one of these solid body acoustic guitars. No wonder we never saw them. They're all over in the Netherlands. I was impressed to see one of these at only 1500 bucks, initially known as the Chicago Music Exchange exclusive colors before Andertons also adopt them. I believe these were birthed in 2019. And then lastly, at 2500 bucks, everything included was a beautiful appetite burst. It's got wider flames than what I normally associate with the exact guitar, but looks pretty good. I've got one of these in my own shop if anybody's interested. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this week's recap. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.